Welcome to Ask China, a special series focusing on the important subjects related to the Chinese political system. Today, we'll look at ethnic minority groups. China has 56 ethnic groups, with the Han group making up 92% of the population, and the other 55 minority groups accounting for around 8%, according to a national census carried out in 2010. So how do different ethnic groups coexist with one another? How do they contribute to the big Chinese family while preserving their diversity? How has the system of regional ethnic autonomy worked over the past seven decades? We have collected questions from people in more than 10 countries around the world via CGTN's social media platforms as well as the Q&A website Quora. To answer these questions, I'm pleased to be joined by Professor Jigdel Wanchuk from the China Tibetology Research Center. Center. Now, this special series will be aired both on CGTN's new media platforms as well as on TV. <laughs> Professor Wanchuk, welcome to Ask China and Jashi Dele. Thank you so much. First, let's take a look at some of the common questions that uh, people from around the world have asked about China's ethnic minorities. Let's take a look. ชนชาติส่วนน้อยในจีนน่ะซึ่งมันมีเยอะมากๆในตอนนี้ความเป็นอยู่เขาเป็นยังไงมีนโยบายอะไรที่ที่สนับสนุนเขาหรือว่าอ
in the past several decades, uh, the central government uh, did a lot of work to improve the life in the remote areas, especially to uh, those ethnic minority places. For example, I'm from Tibet. In Tibet, the central government issued a lot of policies to support the development of Tibet economic uh, and uh, improving the life of people in Tibet, mm -hmm. such as uh, they do not collect any tax from Tibet. And besides that, they allocate a lot of money to support the uh, development of Tibet. They also uh, ask the other provinces to support the construction and the development of Tibet. Mm -hmm. um, are there any discrimination in terms of uh, the public, you know, when, we, when the Chinese people see mm -hmm. ethnic minority, is there any f sense of discrimination? Are there any restrictions in terms of uh, access to education, to social services or to travel? Mm -hmm. No, there is no any, no, 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 I don't think there is any, any uh, prejudice about this mm -hmm. discrimination of for the ethnic minorities because in the constitution that there is one rule that is all the nations in China are equal. All so, the ethnic groups? Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. are equal. So I don't think uh, we have any uh, meet or face any discrimination in China. Okay, you are Tibetan as we have discussed and uh, how are how are Tibetan culture, the Tibetan language, the Tibetan religious practice been helped to, to continue to flourish mm -hmm. uh, despite the fact that Tibetans are considered a part of the big Chinese family? Actually, I'm from the uh, China Tibetology Research Center and the, the main aim to establish this center is to protect the culture of Tibet. And uh, for the religion belief, you know, the Tibetan pe most of Tibetan people believe in Buddhism and uh, they always go to the monastery to pray. And uh, after the dwell, uh, opening up in the 1980s, I think there are 4,700 monasteries uh, rebuilt and uh, the government allocated a lot of fund. Mm -hmm. People and the Tibetan language also, yeah, Tibetan uh, language is that taught in yes. schools and researched? Yes, and from, from the primary school, the, uh, all the Tibetan people, sometimes even Han, uh, Han ethnic, also studied the Tibetan from the primary school. They can uh, choose whether to study Tibetan or Chinese, or they can study both language. So is it mandatory for Tibetans to study the Mandarin Chinese, or can they choose? And what about Tibetan? Do they have yes, to study uh, their Tibetan? Since, since we are in a big family, the, the Chinese is the main language in China. I think uh, for Tibetan, it is better to study the Chinese language. Of course, while keeping their own language, they should study mm -hmm. the other language. Okay. We have also collected some other questions from our netizen friends, and let's take a look at this one about political participation. So, Professor Wanchuk, concerning political participation, what is the importance of opening opportunities for ethnic minorities in Chinese political participation? The central government uh, takes very uh, concerning about the ethnic minorities' uh, view about the planning of nations of the states of China. They have their own view on what happening in their places and they have their opinions, suggestions to the central government. Mm -hmm. And these suggestions can be taken, will be taken into yes, consideration? Yes, of, of course, all, the, all their opinions and uh, suggestions will, will be taken by the central government. After the meeting, maybe they, they will receive the answer for their suggestions, mm -hmm. opinions. What about the makeup of uh, um, cadres mm -hmm. of, uh, of officials, both in the autonomous regions and in the central government or in uh, local governments in China? Are there many high-ranking ethnic minority officials in the Chinese government? Yes, in Tibet, uh, according to the constitution, the chairman of the Tibetan government should be the minor uh, ethnic minorities and all the documents from the Tibetan government 
have bilinguals. That means in both in Chinese and Tibetan. That means we have to tra train a lot of cadres using the bilingual language. Mm -hmm. In terms of the central government, uh, how many high-ranking officials are ethnic minorities? Oh, there are many. <laughs> <laughs> For Tibetan, I, I think uh, now the vice chairman of the uh, standing committee of NPC is Mm -hmm. and also Papala Yelenamyet is in CPPCC. Another question about uh, the Chinese army. Are there ethnic units in the PLA or are all Chinese military units multi-ethnic? Are there any travel restrictions for ethnic minorities in China? I think we already covered that, mm -hmm. but the question about uh, the PLA. I think in the PLA, there are, uh, that is a multi-ethnic army, but that there is no, of course, no single uh, ethnic unit units army. But there are a lot of uh, ethnic minorities in the PLA. Mm -hmm. but, uh, many, many of my relatives were or are in mm -hmm. the army now. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> they are all Tibetans here. Yeah. All right, and concerning travel restrictions. Uh, you, as Tibetan, you can travel anywhere else in yes. the autonomous region or outside China, yes. so long as it is permitted to all Chinese citizens. Yes, we, we can go any place, places if you want, uh, like, like uh, not only inside Tibet, also in mainland China, also we can go abroad mm -hmm. freely. There mm -hmm. is no any restriction. Mm -hmm. um, another question about... Uh, Foreign media reports mm -hmm. about China's mm -hmm. ethnic uh, minority issues and religious, and religious issues sometimes. Um, this question also coming from the internet via Kura. This person by Eddie Du asked, have China's ethnic and religious policies been demonized by the Western media? Do you observe the same thing? Back to 10 years, maybe, maybe some Western uh, media, uh, they do not really realize the uh, the situation in uh, minority ar areas, and sometimes they demonize uh, the policies of Chinese religion policy or the ethnic policy. Mm -hmm. But uh, after opening, uh, opening up and uh, more and more uh, Chinese media report uh, truly, frankly, about what happening in, inside uh, China, so I think now that their view are changing. Mm -hmm. They are accepting that oh, before, before what we report is not true, mm -hmm. but now they believe. Looking into the future, what do you think can be done even better? I always uh, tell the people that seeing is believing. If they come to uh, Tibet, come to China to see what is happening, then they, they will believe by their own eyes. Otherwise, they hear about talking about this, talking about that. That is not good, I think. See for yourself and make your independent judgment yeah. Yeah, about yeah. everything. Thank you, Professor Wontrick, for your insights. And many thanks to our viewers and uh, users for following us on the issue about China's ethnic minorities. Now, um, as ethnic minorities living in autonomous areas are, that are generally lagging behind the rest of the country in terms of uh, development, uh, one of the special policies they enjoy is to get additional points on the Gaokao, the uh, National College entrance exams. But there are also debates on the uh, fairness and effectiveness of this policy. Some say this boosts the chances for ethnic minority students to access quality higher education. Others say it's unfair for the ethnic Han people and uh, not conducive to the long-term development of the competitiveness of talents from ethnic minority groups. What do you say? Should uh, ethnic minority students be given privilege in China's college entrance exams? Join the discussion and leave your comments on CGTN's social media platforms. Thank you for watching Ask China. With that, we come to the end of this edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin. As always, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle The Point with LX. Download the application called CGTN to watch the show on your mobile devices or go to YouTube and look for CGTN The Point. Thanks for watching. You've got The Point. <laughs>